We know that the impact red tide has on fish, and now it's having a similar impact on local business. SNN and Samantha Sonner joins us now live in studio for a look at the latest on red tide in Cortez Village. Thanks, Grant and Hallie. You know, I was doing a story out in Cortez a couple months ago, and I met some business owners who had recently relocated because of the toxic blue-green algae on the East Coast. Mm. And so I checked back in with them when the red tide outbreak happened, and they're feeling similar effects now. In the fall of 2016, Rochelle Newman moved her coastal paddleboarding business across the state and opened the store Cortez Surf and Paddle. After we closed our business in Stewart due to the toxic blue-green algae um, from Lake Okeechobee discharges on the East Coast. They found a new home away from toxic algae in Manatee County's historic fishing village. Cortez is a beautiful, wonderful place with lots of water to explore. Um, and it's 100 miles away from the Caloosahatchee River and the Lake Okeechobee discharges. So we thought that's far enough away, but we were wrong. Two years later, they're dealing with a new algae, red tide. The smell is indescribable. It, it, it is so bad that you just can't breathe. And the wildlife they specialize in giving tours of keeps dying. It's just been heart, heartbreaking to see the, the, the dead fish and um, to, to hear about the, the dolphins and the turtles and the manatees and the whale shark. Coastal paddleboarding, her tour and rental business is shut down till further notice. As if I'm not gonna get in the water, I'm not going to put my customers in the water. So we shut down. Now she's struggling to pay her bills and can't make payroll. I had to let all four of my employees go. So yeah, the, the impact spreads far and wide. Newman still remembers what she told customers when she moved her business two years ago. It's stupid business to stay somewhere that you know you're going to get shut down every two to three years for six months in the middle of summer, which is our busy season. A second move is now under consideration. But I don't want to. I like it here. <laughs> Matter of fact, we love it here. Newman is seeing the state and federal money that's coming in, you know, that's going toward mitigating these efforts for wildlife and trying to find a solution for this. And she's happy that, you know, people are looking for a solution to this problem, but they're not seeing any funding to help businesses that are, you know, suffering because of this red tide outbreak. And your heart goes out because you just don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah. We're hearing encouraging signs, but you know, it may be too late for some of these businesses to uh, to come back or to get their business back. Yeah, hopefully they get a handle on it so she could, you know, not even just hire more people, but have money. Yeah. I mean, so, it's not even about the people anymore. Right. She's the only one and nothing's right. coming in. So we're still in the wait and see here on to where Red Tide is going, but, you know, they are trying some things to fix it. So let's hope for the best there. Samantha, thank you so much for that report. Thanks, Samantha. All right. Thanks, Grant and Holly.